Hello everyone. Last time uh, we discussed about the stream functions and streamlines. Now today we are going to talk about another concept that is the velocity potential. All right. So velocity potential concept is only defined for an air rotational flow. So first we'll just uh, discuss about the air rotational flow and its uh, significance. So here you can see an airfoil. This is an object which is called as an airfoil. Now flow is taking place over this airfoil. This shape resembles the shape of an airplane wing. If you cut the uh, wing of an airplane, uh, cross the cross section of the airplane wing will look something like this. Okay. Now flow is taking place around this airfoil and you draw the, suppose you draw the streamlines around this. Uh, airfoil. So you will see something, you will get something like this. So these are the streamlines drawn all around the airfoil. Alright. Now see what happens away from the airfoil and what happens near the airfoil are two completely different things. So if you take an element, if you take a fluid element or you take, suppose you want to observe how is the flow, what you can do, you just take this model of an airfoil and place it in the wind tunnel and uh, start the flow and observe what is happening. So what you can do, if you just put a, let's say if you put a stick arbitrarily, if I put a stick like this segment away from the, away from this airfoil, okay. So what will happen as the stick will flow around the airfoil this stick will not rotate this stick will not rotate like this it will just go in the same way it will maintain its angle okay its angle will not change okay so it will not rotate while translating it will not go like this okay so it means that the flow away from the airfoil is an irrotational flow because there is no rotation of the fluid elements here so i have written that the flow here is irrotational, okay, away from the airfoil. But what happens at very near to the airfoil, okay, what will happen very close to the airfoil? So if you observe the same element, if you place very close to the airfoil, it is moving like this, okay, and it comes very close to the uh, boundary of the airfoil, it will start rotating like this. It will start rotating and it will rotate while it will translate okay so while translation you will also get rotation of the fluid elements therefore the flow which is very close to this airfoil so i will just draw this zone okay very close to this airfoil okay this zone is a zone of rotational motion Okay, so irrotational flow approximation can be can only be applied to a zone which is away from this solid boundary. And why does this happen? Now this is an observation. If you do this in the laboratory, you will observe. Okay, that okay one particle which is flowing close to the boundary. Oh, it is all rotating also while moving. But one particle which is away, it is not rotating. It is simply translating. Okay very uh, almost negligible rotation you will observe okay now why this is happening you see what happens close to the airfoil i'll just draw a an exploded view near the airfoil boundary what is happening okay so this is an airfoil boundary okay this is an airfoil boundary just small part i have drawn here small part of this airfoil boundary now flow is taking place you see actually what is happening on the boundary this is the boundary of airfoil, solid boundary. On the boundary, what condition, uh, what happens near uh, on the boundary, fluid always follows the no slip condition. No slip condition means what? A fluid element or fluid particle which is in contact with this boundary will have the velocity of this boundary. Now the boundary is not moving, boundary is stationary. Therefore, the fluid here will also have zero velocity, okay. And, but velocity above the boundary is very high, isn't it? 
so what happens because of the viscosity you will get something like this if this is the velocity here okay this is u suppose velocity u but here velocity is zero so you will get something like this u so what you are getting near the boundary what is happening you are getting a gradient this is dy this is y okay so near the boundary you are getting a gradient of velocity gradient of u velocity along the y direction which is very high this gradient is very high because in a small small distance the velocity occupies this free stream velocity this velocity of the flow main velocity of the flow is called as the free stream velocity so it achieves the free stream velocity and above above this small layer there is a layer in this layer in this layer the now i have drawn linear for simplification only but it, it may be of a different shape depending upon the boundary layer so basically this small zone near the boundary is called as the boundary layer boundary layer now in boundary layer there is a high gradient of u velocity with respect to y okay and above the boundary layer the velocity is almost u velocity is almost same at a particular x okay at a particular x location if you change the x location again you will get a different u but profile will be something like this only okay so what you are getting inside the boundary layer which is near to this near to this uh, solid boundary you are getting a very high gradient of velocity du by dy because of this gradient a particle which is flowing inside the bound or in the boundary layer what happens to that particle suppose this is one segment which is flowing okay now what is happening to this segment he the top part of the element is having very high velocity bottom part is having very low velocity so it will start rotating okay it will start rotating as it is moving inside the boundary layer again when do we say that flow is irrotational we have seen that rotation now this is a two dimensional flow so rotation along z, about z axis is given by half of del v by del x minus del u by del y okay now what is happening inside the boundary layer that this del u by del y is very high okay very high for irrotational flow what should happen okay first we'll see what is the condition of irrotational flow i will just revise it earlier we have seen that condition so omega z uh, omega z should be zero therefore it should be half del v by del x minus del u by del y okay so it means that for irrotational flow what should be the case for irrotational flow del v by del x should be equal to del u by del y okay if this is the condition you will get an irrotational flow irrotational motion okay but see here inside the boundary layer this del u by del y is very high change of u velocity with respect to y direction this term is very high high and del v by del x this term if you see the vertical component velocity changes along x direction Th those are very low if you take velo vertical velocity at this x if you take vertical velocity at this x again you will get very low change so the gradient del v by del x is very low okay so these two gradients are not equal inside the boundary layer that's that's why what will happen this element which is flowing inside the boundary layer will rotate also okay it will undergo rotation and you will not get uh, an irrotational motion you will get a rotational motion okay now the same thing applies to the flow over uh, several uh, several objects like we have this car here this is van suppose okay if you observe the flow pattern along this van also what you will observe away from the van boundary you if you observe the flow along the streamlines you will see that flow is irrotational but if you go very close then very near to this 
when near to the boundary of this car you will get a boundary layer inside which flow is rotational also at the back side of the car now this is just uh, some extra information at at the back side of an object there is a flow separation here the flow does not reattach itself and there is a separation of flow and here we get negative pressure this is called a vague zone this is also highly irrotational zone so back side of the car is also highly irrotational so this is irrotational flow oh sorry rotational flow this zone this zone and the back side vague zone this is a vague zone okay it is also irrotational so here also this back side of the air foil is irrotational but away from this solid boundary you will observe a very big a very large zone of irrotational flow here also in this case also you will find a very large zone a very big zone of irrotational flow and this concept of velocity potential is applicable only to this irrotational zone not to this rotational zones that is inside the boundary layer near the solid surfaces etc all right now see now we will try to see what is this velocity potential see mathematically for a rotational flow what we have del v by del x equal to del u by del y for a rotational flow so mathematically the curl of velocity vector is zero okay for a rotational flow therefore according to the vector vector calculus says that then if this is the case then velocity vector can be represented as a gradient of a scalar function okay this is the velocity vector and this is the gradient and this is a scalar function okay so this is just from vector calculus we'll see what is the mathematical meaning of that so velocity vector in for an irrotational flow can be represented as a scalar uh, gradient of a scalar function therefore we can write for for irrotational flow we have we can represent u as minus del u by del del phi by del x and v is equal to minus del phi by del y and if you have w you can write w is equal to minus del uh, phi by del w so this function is called as a velocity potential now we are going to look at uh, the significant physical significance of this velocity uh, potential function also this is just the uh, the mathematical part of the velocity potential so velocity potential so what we are saying we are saying that <coughs> for an irrotational flow the velocity vector can be expressed as the gradient of a scalar function called as the velocity potential function okay so this is the velocity po potential function phi velocity potential or velocity potential function both you can use okay so now uh, what relations we are getting u is equal to minus del phi by del x v is equal to minus del phi by uh, del y okay now see what is the significance of this velocity potential function let's say you have let's say you have streamlines okay these are suppose streamlines psi 1 psi 2 and psi 3 okay now see on the streamlines what we saw last time that on any point on a streamline the value of stream function psi is equal it's constant so on every point of the streamline psi 1 the value of psi will be psi 1 okay similarly we have lines which are called as equipotential lines
like streamlines we also have equipotential lines and equipotential lines means lines on which the velocity potential function is constant okay so the phi value will be constant on the, those lines now we will try to find out what is the property of this stream uh, th this equipotential lines okay streamlines we know we also know that the difference of uh, stream uh, difference of stream function values will give you the volume flow rate between the two streamlines etc this we have seen earlier now we will also uh, derive some understanding for this equipotential lines now see let's say we have now phi is a function of x and y suppose if we consider two dimensional irrotational flow phi is a function of x and y okay uh, no but always remember that phi can be only defined for an irrotational flow for rotational flow phi does not exist so phi so if you want okay so d phi will be equal to what if i want to find out change in phi d phi a total change in phi will be caused because of change in x and change in y so you can write del phi by del x into dx plus del phi by del y into ty okay but del phi by del x is what minus u so d phi will be equal to minus u dx and del phi by del y is minus v so minus v dy therefore we can write now for equipotential lines what will happen phi will be constant okay for equipotential lines of course what will what will have what should happen this phi should not change phi should be constant so d phi value will be zero this value should be zero for equipotential lines so therefore for equipotential line d phi will be equal to zero therefore we can write for equipotential lines we can write what we can write from here from this equation multiplying by uh, put zero here so you will get u dx plus v dy equal to zero okay so this is the equation for equipotential line okay this is the equation for equipotential line now therefore what will be the slope of this line you can find out see u dx plus v dy equal to 0 therefore u dx equal to minus v dy equal to 0 sorry equal to minus v dy therefore dy by dx will be equal to dx will go here dy by dx minus will come here it will minus u by v okay so this is the slope of this this will be the slope of an equipotential line we have not still drawn how will be an equipotential line we are just finding out first the properties of the equipotential line so first property is that the equation of the equipotential line is u dx plus v dy equal to zero therefore we get the slope of that line equipotential line would be minus u by v okay now what is the slope of this line by comparing both the slopes we can find some uh, inference of uh, the equipotential lines so streamlines what is the uh, slope okay that we'll try to calculate slope of an equipotential line so for uh, sorry slope of your streamline uh, equation of streamline we, we saw last time equation of streamline we should don't remember I can just derive again psi for a streamline streamlines are defined by psi function these are the streamlines so psi function is also a function of x and y and uh, what are the properties of psi function if you differentiate u will be equal to v will be equal to sorry u is del psi by del y and what will be the v component minus del psi by del x okay this was the property which we saw last time okay so i will try to derive the equation of a streamline again on the streamline there will the psi will be constant so del psi will be zero so calculate d psi d psi will be del psi by del x into dx plus 
डेल शाय बाय डेल वाई इन टू डी वाई ओके सिंस इट इज अ फंक्शन ऑफ टू वेरिएबल्स एक्स एंड वाई स्पेस कॉर्डिनेट सो पार्शली डिफ्रेंशिएट विथ वन कॉर्डिनेट एंड अदर कॉर्डिनेट ओके ना फॉर स्ट्रीम लाइन्स डी शाय विल बी इक्वल टू जीरो देर फोर वी कैन राइट ओके डेल शाय बाय डेल एक्स इज वॉट माइनस वी देर फोर फर्स्ट डी शाय विल बी इक्वल टू माइनस वी डी एक्स प्लस डेल शाय बाय डेल वाई इज यू यू डी वाई ओके एंड फॉर स्ट्रीम लाइन्स डेल शाय इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो फॉर स्ट्रीम लाइन्स वी हैव माइनस वी डी एक्स प्लस यू डी वाई इक्वल टू जीरो देर फोर वी हैव वी डी एक्स इक्वल टू यू डी वाई सो वॉट विल बी द स्लोप ऑफ दिस स्ट्रीम लाइन वॉट विल बी द स्लोप ऑफ दिस स्ट्रीम लाइन डी वाई बाई डी एक्स इट विल बी डी एक्स विल गो हियर सो इट विल बी वी बाय यू ओके सो दिस इज द स्लोप ऑफ स्ट्रीम लाइन ओके नाउ इमिजिएटली यू गेट सम अंडरस्टैंडिंग इफ यू मल्टीप्लाई द स्लोप ऑफ स्ट्रीम लाइन इन टू द स्लोप ऑफ इक्वी पोटेंशियल लाइन वॉट यू आर गेटिंग just multiply this both so if you multiply okay so if you multiply slope of streamline into slope of equipotential line what you would get v into u v by v divided by u into minus of u by v so you are getting minus 1 okay so slope of slope of stream lines on which psi is constant slope of equipotential lines on which phi is constant if you multiply both the lines both the slopes we you are getting minus 1 therefore stream lines and equipotential lines must be what must be orthogonal must be orthogonal it means that if you have this streamlines okay these are the streamlines so how should be the equipotential lines normal to this like for example if you have this streamlines okay then uh, equipotential lines should be how how should you should draw them okay these are the streamlines is psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 okay and these are the equipotential lines phi 1 phi 2 okay now see now what has happened here you see what has happened here so a two dimensional flow which was taking place you have drawn in net a net of what streamlines and equipotential lines this net is called as a flow net okay now how it is useful to solve the fluid flow problems how we can solve this or how we can use this flow net to get uh, solutions of u and v velocity that we will see and why we use this flow net that we will see okay so now it is very clear that equipotential lines and stream lines are orthogonal 90 degrees to each other okay now we will look at how to what is the property of an equipotential line or what is the use of that physical significance okay see we have uh, discussed our discussion was focused on two dimensional irrotational motion so what is the continuity equation for that flow continuity equation 
for two dimensional irrotational flow what will be that del u by del x plus del v by del y equal to zero it should satisfy this continuity equation okay but we have defined a velocity potential function a scalar function in x and y such that u is what minus of del phi by del x and v is minus del phi by del y okay so you put these values in now if you have defined this function it should also satisfy the continuity equation but natural so just put the values of u and v in this continuity let's see what you get del del x of what is u del phi by del x plus del del y of what is this del phi by del y okay minus equal to zero okay so if you are multiplying uh, by minus one for both sides you are getting del 2 phi by del x square plus del 2 phi by del y square equal to zero okay so this equation is similar to some equation okay we have seen such type of uh, differential equation earlier so that is called as the laplace equation so basically you can write it this is the laplace equation that is applying the laplace operator on the velocity potential function okay now what is the significance or uh, why it is good for us see once this uh, velocity uh, once this velocity potential function can be written as a laplace equation laplace equation has a, uh, can be solved using your using your uh, numerical ways also or you can use the geometry of the flow also to solve the laplace equation so this uh, equation is solvable now what has happened the flow was which was initially having two variables u and v velocity components you define the flow field by just one scalar variable that is phi that is the velocity potential and you can solve the laplace equation to get the values of phi okay get the values of phi how you let's see an example just uh, ideologically what you can do that we will see here so i'll just draw the front part of this try to draw it will not be accurate but i'll just draw, try to draw so this is your suppose this is your suppose front side of this airfoil okay and you have drawn these streamlines now suppose okay these are the streamlines these are the streamlines okay now these are streamlines psi 1 psi 2 psi 3 psi 4 okay how will be the equipotential lines now on this uh, two dimensional flow we saw that we can draw the equipotential lines also so we will draw equipotential lines now okay so these are the equipotential lines okay so in order to understand the flow around an airfoil what you did you plotted your streamlines then you plotted an orthogonal lines which which are, which were the equipotential lines this is phi 1 phi 2 phi 3 phi 4 phi 5 phi 6 phi 6 like this okay these are the equipotential lines now what is the use of this flow net this is called as a flow net when you draw uh, an orthogonal sets of uh, streamlines and equipotential lines that network is called as a flow net and flow net is used to solve the uh, fluid flow problems uh, 
involving irrotational flows okay so irrotational zone of this flow you can solve using uh, this flow net but mind you you cannot solve the you cannot use the solutions very near to this boundary because we already saw that near the boundary actually near the boundary viscous effects are uh, very high and therefore you uh, the flow is not uh, irrotational that's why okay fine so why this uh, velocity potential becomes very useful see in order to solve this flow net what you have to do you just have to solve the laplace equation for phi okay so for that you will have to start with some boundary conditions so there will be some solid boundaries on which you can take zero or whatever you can take some velocity values are known so you can find out uh, use those boundary conditions and uh, get a solution of for phi so once you know this uh, velocity potential function you can get the values of velocity vector at any point you can get the values of u and v at any point in the flow field once you know this phi so complete flow can be uh, solved only using one one unknown this phi is only one single unknown so now what is the beauty of this flow net c basically if you want to solve the flows you will have to solve the navier stokes equation here navier stokes equation involves uh, viscosity also okay even if uh, <coughs> that is neglected actually still you will have a fluid property rho that you will have to consider <coughs> <coughs> the beauty of this uh, method is that here you can solve the uh, fluid flow problem without knowing the fluid properties also no rho no mu so without this you can solve the flow net okay so that's the use of flow net now uh, see some uh, visually if you see a flow net what what understandings you can derive that we will think see del phi by del x is u del phi by del x means it represents the u component of velocity see what will happen if your del phi by del x that is gradient of this phi with respect to x now this in this flow this is x and this is y okay x direction y direction look at this flow net okay here this is x direction this is y direction see if you have a high gradient of del phi by del x that means if you have the values of if your equipotential lines are very close it means what does it mean it means these values of phi are very close to each other it means change in phi with respect to x is very high it means this gradient is very high so indirectly it will mean that velocity u is high it means and if it is away from each other it means u is low so immediately looking at this flow net i can think or i can qualitatively say that okay here the u velocities will be less but as the flow is taking place over this airfoil the u velocities have increased because velocity uh, the potential function lines are getting closer to each other so velocity is increasing okay so velocity is increasing as we are flowing over the airfoil so this is one this is just a, how you can qualitatively uh, get understandings out of this flow net so you can use other uh, properties also of this velocity potential okay so this is all about your velocity potential and stream functions and the use of flow net so quickly what we saw first for irrotational flow you can have a scalar function which is called as a velocity potential function which will give you the or which will give you the u and v components of velocity okay so uh, this is only valid for irrotational flows secondly equipotential lines are the lines on which your velocity potential values are equal so on one equipotential line you will have a single value of potential function velocity potential function okay thirdly your streamlines and equipotential lines are orthogonal so this angle should be always 90 degree okay so wherever you see these angles will be 90 degree okay so this is another property they are both both of both those lines are orthogonal next the velocity potential function should follow the laplace equation okay this is the form of uh, laplace equation it should satisfy that okay so without any extra equation it is only the entire flow field can be solved by just solving one equation okay that's the beauty of the velocity potential function all right now uh, 
दिस मेथड्स आर यूजफुल फॉर इरोटेशनल जोन्स ऑफ फ्लो बट नॉट एनी वेर इन द फ्लो फील्ड बिकॉज देर आर मेनी लोकेशन इन द फ्लो फील्ड सच एज दिस लोकेशन such as this location very close to the airfoil in this location flow is rotational so you cannot apply the solutions of the of this method you cannot calculate u and v based on by solving just this okay it will not be correct why because this is not an irrotational zone it is a boundary layer where you have a rotational flow okay now why you you might say okay this much flow region i am solving what is the use to solve this now see engineering applications most of the engineering applications are affected because of the flow or flow near the boundaries why see let's say this is an aeroplane wing now airplane wing has to generate lift okay lift is generated the lift generated on that airfoil is governed by the flow which is uh, flow very near to the close boundary also now in this close boundary you will get a lot of frictional drag you will get a lot of viscous stresses since shear stress is equal to what mu into du by dy okay so you will get all the viscous stresses that are generated on the airfoil all the drag that all the skin friction drag that your vehicles experience most of that or uh, a lot of part of that drag comes from the viscous drag so viscous drag also comes because of this boundary layer because of the flow very near to the boundary so engineering applications for as far as the engineering applications are concerned the flow near the boundary is also very important for us okay so but still this is one way of solving the fluid flow problems in for irrotational flows all right thank you